All right, welcome to Keeper's Corner Week 6. I'm Jeremy Nygaard, this is Coach Dan Keeper. Coach, how are we doing tonight? Doing all right. So, a tough loss. Last week we played Rice Lake, we went to Rice Lake. The first time you've been the head coach at Rice Lake, like, yeah. in Rice Lake. Yeah. As, as a visitor. Yeah, first, right? first game ever. ever. So they give you a little, uh, little pre-game thing. I'm sure you loved that. Yeah. Did, did well, you hear it? Did you hear that it was happening? Unnecessary. Um, a little bit of it, yeah. The, the guy that's the public address announcer uh, taught with my dad, so I think he, it okay. was, you know, there's a connection there, and I think he, you know, meant, meant, meant something to him for sure. Well, I mean, if I come back and I'm the head, if I go away and then come back to Baldwin Woodville as the head coach in 2047, there you go. There you go. I would expect them to at least yeah. say, hey, I mean, they won't say the good things because I played on a team that was okay, didn't really do a whole lot. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, I, I thought that was nice that they that recognized. Was nice. Uh, it would have been nice then to, to leave him with a, you know. Yes, sir. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So, um, opening kickoff, what happens on that play? Well, um, we directional kick it, and we had two guys that are designated as wedge busters. Okay. One kind of got shoved a little bit in the back, so he was not unable to hit the hit the wedge. Okay. That, you know. You don't get every call, and I understand that. And then we had another guy that got there just a little bit late. Okay. And then <clears throat> we showed our kids on film. Like we had the kids that were uh, away from the side of the kick were just very slow to get over. Like you could freeze it, and you could see here's their wedge, and you could see we literally had five kids that were outside of that wedge. And when you have two guys that don't hit the wedge, that's a problem. Right. You know, because this, that, you know, so we did squeeze, and we've 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 looked at personnel, and we've looked at a little, a couple little changes, but uh, pretty disappointing um, start to the game for right. sure. And and any time a game starts with a with a big play like that, I mean, I think back to the Kiwani game, twenty ten. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I mean, you can either you can fold up the tent, and mm-hmm. you can just feel bad for yourself. Yeah. In both situations, though, we were able to respond, take the lead, and. and yeah. Back, way back then, and, and obviously on Friday night. Right. Um, but it, it felt like, you know, we talked about the Ellsworth game, how we didn't have the procedural penalties. We didn't have any. Very disciplined, mm-hmm. very locked in. Mm-hmm. Friday night felt different. It did. Is, um, that, is that attributed to something specific, or, or what do you think? I don't know. But, I mean, we – I don't know what the – for sure the number, but I want to say it was like seven pre-snap penalties – Either us jump, jumping off sides or us not being set or, you know, right. things of that nature. Uh, and they were big. I mean, the penalties were big in the game, you know. And you Well, know, even, even the opening kickoff. Yeah. It's a touchback if it's right. from the four. Right, yeah. If we don't jump off, if we don't, you know, go a little early, right. that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a game of inches. But those things matter. And those things don't require any talent. They require focus. They, they require... Uh, doing your job and you know that's that's one of the things that we've been talking about all year you know you, you're you're not you know I mean obviously we have some very talented kids but that's not what separates teams what separates teams everybody's talented everybody's capable of those other things separate so you know we're working to be more disciplined and, and you know overcoming those things and you know that's we work awful hard to get it done on Friday night and we got to get it done Friday you know give Rice State credit they you know they cause some turnovers uh, those were not um you know, sometimes you worry about, you know, ball security. You know, we always talk about high and tight. You know, the fumble that Cal had, the kid literally put his helmet, looked like right on right yep. on his hand or right on right on the ball, basically. And then Taden, you know, I don't think he saw the kid, and he had it tight, and it, there was a punch. And right. that's, you know, that's good football by Rice Lake. You know, now, if either one of those events don't happen and we go in and score, you know, we had a couple things there. Uh, you know, I know Ryan Vinadol, um was in great shape for an interception, went up, timed it perfectly, uh, and he's a tr- got terrific hands, and for who knows what happened, it just slipped through his hands, and yeah. their kid's oar is laying on his back, and the ball lands in his lap, and he catches it, and that was a big play in the game. Yeah. Any one of those things goes another way. You know, it could have been different, but, uh, you know, that's that's why, that's why you know, sports are exciting and interesting and, you know, like, you got to overcome those things, and uh, I think our guys are going to be excited for a chance to, you know, right. show, show that we can play better. Right, and those are things that I was always <clears throat> going to get yeah. to. Um, the one thing that we didn't talk about that I was going to ask, offensively through 
a handful of games. We've been mm -hmm. very, very good through the air. Mm -hmm. uh, Cal was held to under 100 yards. Mm -hmm. We ran the ball significantly more than, than we typically do. Mm -hmm. And Gavin Sell was held to no catches. I don't think he even had a target after maybe even the whole second half. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of what was what was what were you seeing on the sideline that was suggesting that we're just going to run the ball because we. We didn't get stopped in the second half. Right. We ran the ball a ton, turned the ball over in the first drive, we turned the ball over on the last drive, mm -hmm. but never really got stopped. But what kind of went into that whole offensive game plan? Well, uh, felt like we were having a lot of success running the ball, and I thought the pace going very fast was was beneficial. In terms of Gavin, um, you know, sometimes when we call plays, uh, we have we take what the defense gives us, and it's not that we didn't call plays with intent to go to Gavin, but sometimes if the defense, like they were, they basically what they did is they did some things with their safety, um, you know, to make it invite us to go to Gavin's side. It looked like, hey, okay. well, I mean, he's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, they know you're going to go. Well, if you watch that safety at the snap, pew, he's flying across the right. field. And, you know, like if we run, like one of the things that we had worked on was running like a skinny post instead of bringing it. If you break it hard in, you're coming right to the defense. And we had some mistakes like that, you know, um, things that we'll learn from. Um, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't like, hey, we, we can't go to Gavin. It's just kind of the way the game unfolded. Uh, there were plays that he certainly could have, you know, like he's a very high on the list of how it goes, but depends on how they line up. And you know, they basically were taking two kids and saying, hey, we're going to try to make other people beat us. Right, and that's how it looked. There was a number of times, I thought, in the first half. Yeah, they, they, they weren't trying to cover it up at all. They just no. brought a safety, and it's yeah. like, if your 10 can beat our 9, right. great. Right. Uh, so why even bother? I mean, you can just take two guys out of the play and play 10 on 9. That yeah. seems like a well, advantage. Well, we did move the ball pretty pretty well. Right. I mean, we stopped. I felt like we, you know, the turnover stopped us. And, yeah. um, you know, maybe a penalty. I think we, you know, I think we did punt it once, didn't we? In the second half? In the first half, yeah, I believe we did. Yeah. Um, and then Colton had a touchdown get called back. Yep. Uh, we had two touchdowns get called back due to penalty. One we scored on, and then mm -hmm. the one at the end of the half we didn't. Yeah, we had a little, you know, like, we kind of went back to the basics. Like, the receivers need to know if they're on or off. And don't be reliant on the officials. Right. Get set, signal if you want to be on or off, and then they can tell you. Right. We had a lot of dialogue going on with the officials. And you know, guys moving. And, 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 yeah, they were giving a lot of feedback up and back. And it's just like it almost got us a little out of our normal group. And, you like, that's not – I'm not blaming the officials. That's on our kids for asking so much. Right. Just get set. You could see. You know what's on. Yeah. Are you on the, or off? Right. You could be off as far as you want. You just got to make sure you're on. Just just let's let's take care of that. And we'll be, I think, better at that. You know, like we, we practice – you know, going quick and getting lined up as quick as you could. And also, you know, having an awareness, you know, look to your left, look to your right, make sure every, make sure everybody's set for a second before we go. I mean, these are, these are things that we can solve pretty easily. Right. And not, it was, it wasn't that you made any schematic changes, right? I mean, no. it was the same formations. It was the same. Right. The one thing that I was curious about, obviously we're trying to do something very similar with middle school kids. Mm -hmm. When you're practicing and you're going as fast as you're going, mm -hmm. are little things like that potentially missed because you don't have side judges on a practice field? But we do have film, so we right. would see it. Okay. You know, I, I feel like if kids weren't set or if they're moving, I, you know, we, we the, the drone gives us right. fantastic film, and, and you can see all of them. All so. of them. Okay. That was one question that I had. Yeah. So I'm like, you yeah. know, that would be one thing. And obviously, yeah. with the middle school kids, we don't have the right. The ability to film, but that's one thing that I wonder too, because like during the game, I'm like, don't get up on the line, you got to get up further, mm -hmm. and it's it's rules that maybe seventh graders don't understand. These high school kids obviously do, right? But, but it takes they, time, right? For and every group, it takes time. And there's there's formations where guys that are typically not on the line right. are on the line, and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the one play that sticks out to me, thinking about Friday night, was fourth quarter, mm -hmm. fourth down. Rice Lake has the ball deep in their own territory. Mm -hmm. They call timeout. Yeah. And I'm like, why would – that was the question that Nick and I talked about. Like, why are they calling timeout? Mm -hmm. if, if, we, if we score, if we get the ball back and score, they're going to want their timeouts. Mm -hmm. And then it made sense when all of a sudden you see the offense jogging back. Yeah, we expected that they were going to go for that. 
because you because they realized if we give the ball back, we're not going to stop them, right? I mean, that's got that's why you go. For that's it. why you go for it in that situation without right. a doubt. And you know, we'll never know. But I mean, obviously, uh, coach is, Coach Hill's decision and our inability to get a stop there. <coughs> I mean, that was huge. You know, how close was that play? Um, uh, I mean, it was close, but I mean, they got the first down. I don't think it was. So what was the controversy with the, the sticks? Did you want it measured? or did I, you... I did. Uh, what the official said, because the, the guys on the chain moved, but the official said the line to gain had to be the 22, and they had it by a full yard. Okay. And he said, we marked this before the play. I know that they, ha- they had to get to the 22, okay. and they were a full yard beyond it. So he said, I'm not going to measure it because I know for a fact that's where it was. And just because they pick it up doesn't mean they unhook the little marker. Right. So they could have gone gone through it. And I just was like, well, I'm not going to – it's not going to change the outcome. Right. And I'm not going to, you know, uh, take these guys off. I mean, but my from my perspective is mm-hmm. if you want to measure – why can't they just measure it? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna prove. Them, well, right? in, in the game, yeah, you would, one would think that there's what do they have to lose, right? Other than unless they you know had a bigger big rush or something, I don't know. But uh, you know, he just said we're not gonna measure it because they 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 had the game the twenty two and they made it out to like the twenty three, and he said it's it's a yard, and he said I know that we marked it before. Okay, that was so, that to me was an interesting. So thing. when when that 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 was the discussion, then when he said that, I'm like, all right. Okay, and then I believe we they get two first downs after that. Yeah, we couldn't. We, we um, yeah. I mean, is there any strategy? Because I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, watching I, the game. I, like, I wish we there were some things that we certainly could have done differently, and I wish we would have done, but you know, we didn't. So. So how? But how do you manage that differently? Because like we have to get a stop. Yeah. There, you know. I, I think there were maybe a couple run blitz things that we probably could have okay. gone that that you know. Hey, what the? Heck? I mean, hey, if they if they break one. Because what we were doing, obviously, was not stopping them. Generally speaking, we tackled too high. Um, and that's... that's So schematic I, you know, stuff. Yeah. But not... Because I'm thinking, you know, there's there's situations where you could let a team score to get the ball back. Yeah. But I'm like, we're down yeah. six. That's mm-hmm. going to make it a two-possession game. Right. That doesn't make sense. Plus, it's 70 right. yards. Like, right. I, and I... Yeah, I'm, you, yeah. I'm the type of football fan that I want the team behind to have the ball at the end because that's more exciting to watch. The Super Bowl last year, the end of that sucked because yeah. it was, we're going to waste the time and we're going to kick the field goal. Like, just just the whole strategy behind yeah, it. Yeah, we just couldn't get to stop. And, uh, you know, there were there were a couple things that we maybe should have done. But, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Right. Uh, you know, I thought our kids played hard, and I, I don't think it was a lack of effort. I just think, you know, we just, we just made too many mistakes, and we just got to be a little more focused, um, you know. So that brings us to, you know, what we got going this week with homecoming. Yeah. Homecoming is always a challenging week. Yeah, it is. Uh, for, for coaches because there's so much other stuff going on. And, right. You know, I, I think the kids enjoy it. Coaches maybe don't enjoy it as much as yeah. the kids do. To be I, honest, I, hope, but, I hope not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Osceola. Yeah. Um, they, they've struggled a little bit so far this year. But last year... I felt like Osceola struggled a little bit before we went there, and then we did. We might have played out one of our worst games of the year, if not our worst game of the year last year at Osceola. Is yeah. that accurate? Yeah, they Osceola had a, a completely different defense than we had, had anticipated seeing. Um, they had a very very light box, and they just they dared us to run it last year. That'll be interesting to see if they employ that similar strategy this year. I, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, but I will say this, you know, I watched them. They played a really good Mondovi uh, team early in the year, and that was a really good game. You know, uh, <clears throat> I know they they were they, you know they were a close game this last week. Um, you know, they've had a couple that haven't haven't been their way, but I guarantee you that they're a, a very well coached team, and they're good. And if if you don't bring it, they can embarrass you. They can. You know, you, they can stick it right, right, right down your throat on uh, homecoming. So, our kids got to be ready to roll. Yeah, Coach Newton has those kids ready to play Baldwin, Woodville every time they play. Yeah, I mean, does. But that's the, it's similar to you going to Rice Lake. It might mean a little bit more. Yeah. When it's when it's your your hometown team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, before we 
completely forget about Ellsworth, which I, I know that you probably would like to do, or Rice Lake. Yeah. Uh, players of the game? Um, <clears throat> uh, player of the game, I believe, uh, was Gus uh, for the for special teams. He made all okay. his kicks. Yep. Um, then I believe defensively, the player of the game was uh, Jackson, Johansson. Okay. Thought he played well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's tough. I mean, he's tough. Uh, and I believe the player of the game offensively, I believe was was uh, I'm gonna take it back. I think actually it was Ben Peavy was the was okay. the, was the D player of the game. Jackson was a nominee. Um, offensive player of the game is eluding me right now. I, you try I, to flush these. Kids I do. Out. You yeah. don't. You don't think about it as much. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's fine. That, yeah. um, Monday then Rice Lake came to Baldwin. Yeah. For a little. Uh, a little C squad JV. Yeah. Um, C squad fell short, uh, if I recall correctly. Yeah, the C squad uh, was a competitive game. They wound up giving up a score late. It was twenty-two to nothing. You know, and I look at our freshman team. <laughs> I really believe that you have a group of kids that have they have plenty of talent. They haven't had a lot of success in their in their junior high in terms of winning a lot of games. They won their first one here. Um, uh, the opener they won, but they won, lost a couple one, couple games. But I watch those kids, and I see I see kids that are that are certainly good enough. But I also see kids that need to, uh, you know, have a little more faith and a little more leadership in themselves, and you know, understand sometimes things are difficult, and you know, you got to you got to keep keep fighting and keep pressing on, and uh, you know, that's a thing that you hope that they can learn through sport, and hopefully it trans translates beyond sport into all realms of your life. Um, but I think I think there's there's a lot of untapped. Uh, we, they are not anywhere near where they can be, and I don't know if they know that yet. So that's something with that group. Uh, the JV played a really. Uh, I think our JV, I, I believe, is undefeated. They beat uh, Rice Lake, a good game, twenty-two to eighteen. Um, you know, I really like the the kids that are, our JV kids have been in the program they worked there it's it's a phenomenal work ethic group that, that our sophomore group and that's primarily sophomores and you know you have some 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 juniors that, that don't don't start they, they play in a JV game but man those kids it's important to them they work hard and they're getting a lot out of out of uh, you know it's fun and you'd like to have that success for those sophomores because that's the hardest year where you're that sophomore year is tough. The, the scout by guy, far the hardest trying to year. Be someone else, you're not getting time. By far the so hardest year. We're trying to do right. They don't get as much time in a, in a school our size when you know it's just it's tough. And you mentioned it before. They go from playing a game Monday, which is probably a very physical game. Yes, hard fought. And you get after Tuesday, to Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? So now that you're retired and you have a little bit of extra time, yeah. I assume that you stuck around for the powder puff game. To see if maybe you wanted to recruit any of these girls, uh, did you do that or not? I did not stay around. I, I was unable to. Um, I did hear that the seniors won the powder puff. Uh, Martin scored a couple touchdowns. Oh, is that right? She's she's free in the fall. Oh, there around. you go. There you go. I don't know what uh, she would offer you, but yeah, I, I don't think they filmed it, so I, I guess I'm not going to get a chance to see it. But, <laughs> but I think uh, it. Uh, I think it actually showed up at the end of the JV game on the huddle camp. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, if you're bored. Interesting. So. We go Osceola Friday. Yeah. Badgers Saturday? Or is it Friday night this week? Yeah, I believe it is Friday night, and I hate that when they play Friday night. In fact, last Saturday I did not watch the Badgers. You went up to Duluth? I went to Duluth and watched Andrew Klopp, uh, you know, former Blackhawk and Klopper uh, starting at, uh, you know, linebacker up there. Yep. Played really well, had 10, 10 tackles. Uh, certainly enjoyed the Klopp's tailgate there. Great hosts. And, uh, that just it's just fun to see you know former former players right. being successful and it's he's just having a great experience at Duluth so that was cool and Isaiah scored a touchdown for River Falls late yeah in the game. I believe Isaiah's had I think that's his third touchdown yeah, second or third for sure and uh, seventy five to three River Falls win. yeah and they're you know they're a juggernaut I mean they're 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 very you know they're explosive they're fun so you didn't get to watch Badgers come back after playing really poorly in the first half you I probably did. you probably I, DVR'd it I did DVR I have I have not watched. Watched it though, just due to. I think you're okay not watching you guys. Well, I got to, but. And then uh, Packers. You know, um, I felt good about the, you know, a lot of what I saw. Uh, you know, I think Jordan Love 
again put together another pretty good game. You know, defensively, if they just catch those interceptions, you know, that are right there, gift wrapped. I mean, I think they had two. Alexander dropped one, and Quay Walker had one right there. He dropped one. You got to make those plays. You know, that's a big deal in the NFL. Um, wasn't thrilled with their fourth quarter. Wasn't thrilled with their defense, especially in the second half. Didn't have a lot of faith that they were going to stop. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do look at it as a little different expectation from for the pack. And I think if Aaron Rodgers is their quarterback, everybody's ticked. Jordan Love, they're one and one, and they've been competitive. I think people are like, hey, this is all right. So that's kind of the camp I'm into. So I'm going to feed you a stat. I gave you a stat before with yep. the, the three touchdowns. Yeah. First two games of the year to throw three touchdowns and have no interceptions in the first two in the first game and the second game. Mm -hmm. It's been done by three quarterbacks before Jordan Love did it this year. Okay. You want to hear those names? Sure. Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. Tom Brady, mm -hmm. Peyton Manning. That's a pretty good company. Not Jordan Love. That's a pretty good company. Three Hall of Famers in a row? Well, let's let's uh, you know. It's two games, so it's a little early. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does seem pretty calm. He does have good mobility. Uh, Concern, you know, the Packers O line with you know Jenkins being out, and who knows what's going on with Bakhtiari. They were going to play him on turf. Yeah, I don't know if that's for sure the thing, but we'll see. You know, I, I I've heard that opinion that that might be, you know, what his. I don't know how that works. But if you were going to be a quarterback, <laughs> on a list of other quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't those be the three guys you'd want to be on the list? I don't know who else you'd rather have on that it's, list. It's great company. It's pretty amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it on Friday. Then you're going to come home to hear the Badgers on Friday. And then you're going to pack Sunday again. Pack Sunday. We're going to get back to getting those three wins. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. All right. Well, that was Coach Kiefer. I'm Jeremy Nagger. This is Kiefer's Corner Week 6. And we'll see you at King Field for homecoming on Friday night.